Welcome to the technical session at OCA Days 2023. It's a privilege to introduce our next speaker. You certainly heard about uh, what he does in different area, like MES Builder, Runboat, OCA, as an OCA board member, Python package in the Python packaging community. Today, Stefan <coughs> challenged the statu quo, questioning why an Ado project should be structured differently from a typical Python project. Exactly that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the nice introduction. <laughs> um, indeed, and thank you for being here uh, physically or online. Um, so indeed, today I'm going to discuss um, how we can organize uh, an Odoo project like a regular uh, Python application. Um, and the reason this is important is that um, when you do a customer project, uh, there is this dichotomy between your own code that you are creating for, for a customer and uh, then dependencies. And dependencies are uh, frameworks or libraries that you, that you are going to uh, reuse in, in your project. And one way to do that is copy everything in your project, but uh, for various reasons, that's maybe not the best way to, to do it. I won't go into detail about that. What's important is that you need to manage those dependencies. Um, and with an Odoo project, is, uh, it's not any different, actually. Uh, Odoo is a framework you are going to use in your application, just like you could use Django or what, uh, any other framework. And then uh, Odoo comes with standard plugins, add-ons. Then you use OCA add-ons to build your project or uh, reusable add-ons you are building in your own company that for some reason you, you cannot share or, or whatever. All those are dependencies from the point of view of your uh, customer project. And managing dependencies in software project is not an easy problem. Um, and and the, re the, 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 the main challenge you have to address is the, the challenge of reproducibility. What you want to do is to uh, be sure that what you are going to deploy is exactly what, what you have tested. And also, um, of course, you can do that with a, with a Docker file, for instance, and deploy the same image that you have tested. But what happens, for instance, if there is a bug fix in your base image, you need to rebuild uh, your, the, the exact same versions on top of a different base image. So you need to know what were the dependencies at the time you built your, your image. Um, also, for instance, if you have a bug fix to do, you want to, to get the exact same version, do a little patch uh, and, and be sure that at that moment you don't do any other change that the bug you, you are fixing. And for OCA add-ons or third-party Odoo add-ons is exactly the same problem. You want to pin individual add-ons. Uh, one problem we have in OCA, for instance, is that you have big repositories with many different add-ons. If to embark a little patch on one given add-on, you have to update a whole repository full of different add-ons, you, you, you run a huge risk to, um, to deploy actually new bugs or unintended features uh, when, when you just want to, to fix one little add-on. And the other reason um, I think it's important to use standards, um, well, standards are a good thing, right? Because it enables tooling interoperability. Um, if you, your development workflow is based on standard mechanism, there is a greater chance that there are existing tools that you can use to, to support it. Uh, tools existing today or maybe tools that will happen tomorrow like um, because those tools would support the same standards and then there is a good chance that if your, your workflow is standards based future tools you will be able to use them. It's also better for developer onboarding if you have a, a workflow that is commonly used in the industry 
uh, there is a greater chance that when you onboard new developers on your project, they will be at least familiar with some part of your way of working and it will be easier um, to, for them to, to, to start on your project. And generally, the, the good thing with standard is that you try to avoid to, to re reinvent things that have been, or, or solve problems that have already been solved in a broader community. So, a few words about me. I'm a co-founder of Axon. I'm the chief techie there. Um, I'm a board member of the OCA and uh, quite involved in the community. And I'm also a member of the Python packaging community and I've the privilege of being a pip maintainer too. Actually, I became a pip maintainer because I was trying to solve <laughs> problems for, for the Odoo uh, community. I tried to contribute as upstream as possible. Um, so in this talk, what I'm going to do is first um, spend a few time explaining a few modern uh, standards that exist today and have been developed over the past 10 years in the um, Python packaging community, at least those who are relevant for, for our community or do community here. Um, then I will spend a little bit of time explaining how uh, we are going to package uh, individual OCA add-on uh, starting from version 17. Probably know this setup directory we have in all these uh, OCA add-ons. Trying to get rid of that because it's a bit annoying and now we have a standard-based solution and I explain that. And then I explain and give you, explain you how we organize uh, an Odoo project based on those standards and uh, show you a quick demo of how you can add or remove a dependencies uh, using those, those mechanisms. So, Python packaging standards. Actually, there are four cornerstone standards that are important in, in Python packaging. Uh, how do you define metadata about the packages? Uh, how do you create uh, a distribution format? Uh, the, the, the wheel format, uh, it's important. Um, another standard is the build backend interface. We now have in the Python packaging um, a standard way for a project to express how uh, an installer tool can build it to, to install it or to create an editable install for it. And then there is this pyproject.toml file, which is relatively new, a few years, but is quickly becoming the way to declare that some directory is actually a Python project and how you can uh, install it. And if you want details about those standards, there is this packaging.python.org where uh, all the specifications are uh, are collected, uh, so you can find them there. So first, packaging metadata is relatively easy. It's not different in Python, Python than other uh, packaging system, it can be NPM or, or Debian or whatever. Uh, you need to give package a name, explain what it is, a correct package name. You give, need to give them versions, what it means to compare to version, uh, what it means to have a version that is greater than another one or identical versions. And then uh, in the package metadata, you express what are the dependencies of your package. Uh, you can express that uh, uh, some package need to depend on another, another one on a specific version or a minimum version or say that um, you want uh, to depend on a package that maybe is not published on the standard index, but is available in some uh, repository at a specific tag or commit. So all those are standardized mechanisms. And in the metadata, there is of course more like the description, the license, the authors, all those things that are not necessarily to do an, necessary to do an installation, but are really useful to discover the package and to create um, a, a package store uh, to, to help them, help you discover the packages. So all this is fully standard in the Python world. <coughs> then there is the, <coughs> sorry, the, the wheel format. The wheel format is the binary distribution mechanism for, for Python packages. And it's actually very simple. It's a zip file, which has a structured name. So just by looking at the name, you already get some information about the metadata of the package. So 
like, like this one, you see Werkzeug, you, you get already the package name, then you have the version in the file name, so you don't need to open the zip file to know what, what version is in it. And then there, there are the three last part are what are called the, the compatibility tags and are saying with which Python versions or which platform uh, the, the package is, is compatible. And then in the zip file, you have the source code. It's not for, for a pure Python package. There is nothing else than that, the, the source code as is. And then the metadata directory, where you can find the license, the full text of the license, or a metadata file where you get all the metadata that I explained uh, before. There are some other details not relevant for, for today. What's important with the zip file, uh, with the, the wheel file, is that basically to install it, all you have to do is to unzip it somewhere in the Python path, nothing else. And basically what Pip is doing when you ask him to install a, a wheel file, it just does that, unzip the file at the right directory. Uh, again, a few more details, but fundamentally this is that. And then the, the build backend interface. When you have a Python project, we now have a standard to explain installers or builders uh, how to build a project. And for that, there is this build backend interface, which are a few functions that are, have standard as name, like build wheel. How do I build a wheel for this directory? Or how do I build this project for an editable install? So it's installed but keeping the source code in place so you can modify it uh, and rerun it without um, having to, to do a full complete reinstall and things like that. So basically build wheel, very easy. And finally, there is this pyproject.toml, which is that if you find that pyproject.toml in a, a directory, you know that this it is a directory for Python project. And an important part of that, that pyproject.toml is that it declares the build system. What do you need to build or install this project? And the build system say, what are the requirements? What are the build tools you need to have to, to build it? In this example, we say that we need setup tools, minimum version 67 and the wheel package. And we know that an installer knows that if it is installing those two tools in an environment, then it will be able to import the build backend module. We also need to be explicit about that. So in setuptools.build underscore meta, the installer tool, if he imports that, that modules, it will find in it at least the build wheel uh, function that it can call to build a wheel for the project. Whatever needs to be done to build a project. It can be as simple as zipping the source code, but it can do other things. It can transform the code, put it in another directory, many, as many things as the developer wants. And it's actually very easy to extend an existing build backend to create your own if you have specific requirements in your project. Okay? And then, uh, for a project, you can also define the metadata of your project. And we also have a standard for that. So in the same pyproject.toml file, you can have a project section where you give, can give the name, the description, the dependencies, uh, which Python version is required to run the project, which license it has, uh, and also, and so on. And there is the possibility that if your, your metadata it's not static, like uh, in this example, I've declared that the version is dynamic. What this means is that to know the version of the package, you, you have to invoke the build tool that will compute the version for, me, for it. For instance, the version, it can be interested, interesting to, to get the version from a git tag, for instance. That's something that's done very commonly. In that case, you, you don't know the version just by looking at that pyproject.toml file. Um, you have to invoke the build tool to uh, compute it. And then there is also a standard mechanism for tools to store their configuration in, in that pyproject.toml. So for instance, coverage, <coughs> you can configure in the same file. So it's quickly becoming 
um, the, the de facto place to configure a Python project. All right. And then the last one is that famous requirements.txt file. It's not really a standard because uh, it's actually a, a pip file format, so it's not an interoperability standard on the same level as the other. But that, that's all we have today. There are discussions about creating a standard for that. But it's very easy. Basically, it's a list of um, requirements, so package names with a version of package name with a git reference, and so on and so on. And it's important. One way to, to pin the, all the dependencies of, of one project is to create such a file where you list all the exact versions of the dependencies you need uh, to run your project. All right. So how do we use this now in the Odoo community? Well, the first thing is packaging individual add-ons. Um, because remember, I said one goal we have is to be able to depend on separate add-ons because that's the, the, the reusability uh, granularity we have in Odoo. Um, and to do that, <coughs> in OCA, you know, there is this setup directory with the setup.py, which was the old way of, of doing that. Now, the modern way, the standardized way, is to declare a build system in a pyproject.toml. And the idea here is that in version 17, we will create, uh, the, the, the tooling uh, will create in all add-on direct, in each add-on directory next to the manifest file, we will create a pyproject.toml to declare that each add-on is actually a small Python project in itself. All right? And for that, I created a little tool that is called Wool, that is basically uh, computing all the metadata from the manifest file. Because in Odoo, all the metadata, the name, the version, the dependencies, everything is in the manifest file. So there is no need to recreate or to copy it in, in something else. So it's basically <coughs> a build where all the metadata is dynamic, is computed by the build tool. And so we are going to create this file uh, in each uh, add-on directory in place of those old uh, setup.py files. I've already done it in the MIS Builder branch, so if you want to test it, uh, you can take, for instance, those comments, you go into the MIS Builder directory, and you can run pipx run build. Build is, the, um, is a build tool for, for Python that understands how to run a build backend, and you want to build a wheel, run it in that directory is going to work just like it works today with any Python project. You can also do an editable install of an editable add-on, of a single add-on. So if you go into a, the add-on directory, you type pip install minus editable dot, the directory name. It will install the add-on in the Python path, so it will become immediately usable by the Odoo version that is available in your environment. You can already do that today, by the way, in the setup directory. Okay, so that's not very new. It's just a transition to using uh, modern standards to do the, the, same, the same thing. Uh, and the result, uh, that's also not new. Huh? We have been doing that since version 8 uh, for OCA add-ons. Um, uh, a wheel for an Odoo add-on is uh, looks like this. So what we do is that we prefix uh, the add-on name with Odoo underscore add-on, uh, so we, we can know that the package is is an Odoo add-on, and we don't have name conflicts uh, with whatever is published on on PyPI. You get the version, and uh, it's a portable pure Python, so the the tags uh, look like this. And in the wheel, you have the metadata directory to, to follow the standard. And you have the source code. <coughs> and this is basically all the, the source code of the add-on. The only difference is that you see is this in, it is in this odoo slash add-on directory, because odoo slash add-on is the namespace package where uh, odoo is finding add-on. And that's 
because of that that you can write import odoo.addon.mis builder, right? So you just unzip that in the Python path and Odoo will discover them. The metadata looks like this. Uh, you see that uh, the dependencies, MIS Builder is depending on the date range add-on, for instance, so you, you see it here. And <coughs> we have version constraint. Uh, so if you have an add-on in version 16, its dependencies must be version 16 uh, too, and so on. Okay, now if we look at um, a customer project. How do we assemble all this to uh, deliver a custom project? Well, we are going to um, create a pyproject.toml, as you could have guessed. <coughs> and we are going to declare uh, our build system. And the build system, in this case, I'm using Hatchlink, which is a build system which is part of the Python Packaging Association. Uh, with a, a plugin for it, which is called Atshodoo, uh, which basically does one essential thing, is looking in the add-ons of your project, of your customer project, to discover the dependencies, because the dependencies, they are in the manifest, right? So the only thing this, uh, well, it does a few other things, but the main thing this plugin is doing is looking at the add-ons in your project to find the dependencies and compute them. And so if you look at the project section, standard, you give it a name, you give it a version, you give it a description, you can say which Python version your project is supporting, fully standard. And then you are saying, okay, my dependencies, they are going to be dynamic. I will not list all my dependencies in this pyproject.toml. I will let the Atshodu plugin look at the add-on to compute them when I build uh, the project to, to install it. And then there is some boilerplate to configure that, not that much. <coughs> you are, need to, to tell uh, the, the plugin where the Odoo add-ons are located. A good convention, I think, is to place them in Odoo slash add-on in, in your project because uh, since you write import odoo.addon dot the addon name in odoo, that's, the, that's just a namespace package in Python. That's a standard thing in Python. And in Python, your namespace package, you organize them like that. You give them odoo, the, 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 the directory structure follow the namespace uh, structure. And then you enable the, the plugin. Bit of boilerplate, and that's it. And then from there, you can do, you can use basically any tool you want, right? Any uh, uh, tool that knows how to work with a Python project is going to work with that uh, structure. And today, this landscape is very di dynamic. There is lots of competition. Uh, there is Arch, uh, PDM is a, um, uh, a project that's worth following. There is this venerable pip tools, uh, which is uh, locking dependencies and so on. In this example, I will show you how it works with a tool called pip deep freeze that we created. Um, it's a tool that I'm exper where I experiment, but it's really production ready. Things that could go in pip uh, someday, uh, because they are basically common feature for project management uh, that could land in pip someday. And I will show you uh, how, how this workflow uh, works. Um, so to do that, <coughs> I show you, is it readable? I think so. Um, I show you my, my project structure. So I, at the root, I have this pyproject.toml that I just show you, five minutes, okay. Um, and then in my add-ons, um, I have a standard manifest, and I have this requirements.txt file. Remember the log file that I mentioned before? It pins uh, all the versions, and it says, okay, I want this specific commit of Odoo, right? Now, if I add an add-on 
uh, to my dependency. Let's say I want to add MIS Builder in my dependencies. I just have the sync command is used in many different tools, like pip tools as it and so on. So if I do uh, pip deep freeze sync, it's going to look at all the dependencies of my project and is discovering there is a new dependency that is not already installed in my environment. And the result is that it has updated my requirement.txt and it has added my three new dependencies pinned at exactly the version I've installed today. And you see, I just add MIS Builder in my manifest. It has discovered that it needs date range and report XLA6, which are dependencies of MIS Builder. And now I can commit that. I can share that with my colleague. I can use this requirement.txt to install in my production environment. I'm sure of what I'm going to, of which exact version I'm going to install. And if I say, let's say I want to uh, install uh, a new module we are, we are working on, uh, account reversal usability, uh, this one is not merged yet. Okay, we are working on it. And I have for that, a constraint file that is saying that for account reversal usability, don't go looking for it on PyPI. Look in this pull request. Okay, that's also standard syntax. Uh, I'm saying it's in the account financial tool repository and uh, the branch name, the, the git ref, it's ref pool, the pull request number and so on. And if I rerun my sync uh, command, you'll see that it's going to, um, actually in this case, you see it's running a git clone. So it's going to, to fetch uh, the, the module. It's building it, looking at its own dependencies. And the result is that uh, my requirement.txt file has been updated. Uh, if I can show it to you, account reversal usability is going to pick it up from this git repo, but not the pull request, a very specific commit uh, in that repo. And again, just with a very simple uh, command, I include it in my project, a specific commit of one specific add-on. So if the PR is updated, Maybe there will be incompatible changes. I don't know. If I've tested that, I'm deployed that, I have a guarantee that I'm going to deploy the exact same thing. And I can choose when I want to get the new version of that pull request or when it will be merged, I'm going to remove that from here, resync, and it will discover that the, the add-on is on PyPI and don't get my, the, the, the version uh, from, from PyPI. And it also works if I remove a dependency. For instance, if I remove uh, MIS Builder. Uh, oops, not this one. PDF sync. <coughs> and is, again, computing the dependencies. If the network, yeah, that's a network issue. But at the end, is going to say, oh, I've seen that th those dependencies are, are installed, but they are not required by your project. Do you want to un uninstall them? It's a bit slow. Uh, OK, so there we are. So at the end, you say, OK, I see you have date range, MIS Builder, Report XLA6. Do you want to uninstall them? You uninstall, and there you are. Your requirement.txt is updated, and again, we only have that new dependence. And yeah, basically, that's all there is to it. Um, today, I show it with pip deep freeze. That's the one we use. We know it works well. Uh, maybe PDM works as well. I don't know. I've not tested recently. At some point, uh, many different tools or even uh, PyCharm or 
uh, VS Code uh, are going to support that natively. natively. For instance, uh, VS Code as a function today. I see you are in the Python project. Do you want me to create a virtual environment? And is proposing that to you. You choose a Python version. And he proposed to install uh, everything for you. And I don't think I have time, but by the way, all this works in uh, Docker too. Uh, so you can develop in a local virtual environment, but you can work in a Docker, uh, Docker Compose environment if you prefer. Uh, I don't think I have time to demonstrate that today, but I'll be around, so if you want, uh, catch me and I, I can show you. Thank you. And by the way, uh, the demo I'm doing today, it's based on a demo project that I've published uh, there. So you can look it up. There is more readme. I've not spent much time to give a lot of detail, but you can, you can play with it and don't hesitate to ask questions if you want to, to use it uh, yourself. And I'll share my slide, of course. Any question? Yes? Yes. Um, if you look at my example here, actually we don't use Git aggregate that much these days. Uh, the only case where we need to use it is that we have two PR on the same add-ons. But as long as it's one PR for one add-on, which can just reference the, the PR directly uh, with uh, this syntax. Um, so you give the, the add-on name, the, the repo, and then the git ref uh, here. And that's all, all there is. Okay. Yes? Uh, what about Ubuntu itself uh, in all of this? Because uh, it's, uh, it's a quite hard work, but uh, uh, Ubuntu is referenced with uh, a, a commit, not a module, uh, account module uh, 16. Yes. Uh, did you uh, discuss uh, this approach with Ubuntu? Uh, uh, yes, uh, what do you think about it? I, I actually, they have no real interest in that uh, because for they need uh, Odoo is one thing. You, you always get all of Odoo. Um, so the approach uh, I've chosen is that a tool like Wool computes the dependencies, knows which are the add-ons that are part of the Odoo uh, standard distribution, right? So if you have an add-on that depends on account, actually, you will receive a dependency on Odoo. And that's the way, that's the way it works. Um, otherwise, Odoo has its own uh, packaging thing, setup.py, so that's why it works, uh, because it's declaring its dependencies and so on. There is a little bug there, because if you want to create a wheel uh, from Odoo, by default, it doesn't include uh, all the add-ons. It only includes the base add-on. And there is a patch for that, and in the demo project, there is the git aggregate uh, for Odoo. Oops. There is the, the git aggregate for Odoo that includes this patch uh, to the setup.py of, uh, of Odoo. Other questions? Yes? Um, you need to put this pyproject.toml at the root of the add-on, so the standard tooling is going to know it's a Python project. So that, that's the only thing you do. There is these three lines, pyproject.toml, that you need to put at the uh, add-on next to the manifest file. And then you can reference it with a git reference, and, and that's it. And the OCS has automatic tooling for that, right? 
Yes, OCA, the, um, in, OCA is doing it in pre-commit and also the, the OCA bot, in case the pre-commit has not done it, the OCA bot is ensuring that they are all there. Uh, but uh, we'll, I think we'll merge that today. Uh, you will see the pre-commit file of Odoo 17 has this wool init command that adds the, the pyproject.toml uh, to, to the repo. By the way, pyproject.toml, you can customize it, for instance, you can, th that can be interesting, for instance, if you say that your add-on depends on some minimum version of an OCA add-on, for instance, you can customize the pyproject.toml of your add-on to, to express that. You, can, you cannot express that in the depend section of an Odoo manifest, but you can override the dependencies to say, I want, I don't know, a QJob minimum version three. You can do that. 